So last night, Vladimir Putin officially uh, came out with a statement saying that he was going to invade Ukraine. The original sentiment for why he was going to invade Ukraine was because he wanted to recognize the independence or rather a day before he recognized the independence of these two regions uh, within the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine that has Russian people living in that region. He did a bullshit. Like we're recognizing the independence of this region, uh, these two, uh, these two like independent republics, these independent people's republics, and then uh, recognizing their sovereignty and then brought in a peace trooper, uh, a, a, a peaceful battalion. OK, Drop not a real thing. Jason. All right. Not a real not thing at all, peaceful. which I consider to be an act of war, an act of invasion, boots on the ground within Ukrainian borders. And uh, the suspicion was that he was going to overtake the entirety of the Donbass region and potentially some forward uh, areas that are completely outside of the scope of Donbass, uh, uh, exclusively to neutralize Donbass and make everybody hyper focus on a different part of Ukraine. He didn't just do that, but also officially declared uh, an invasion, said that he was going to denazify Ukraine, said he was going to basically do this because the, the LDR, I mean, the LPR, DPR uh, regions had asked for help and they said, please, we need your help. We need to be defended. Now, there has been ongoing shelling on both sides in that region for a very long time, since 2014. There are Russian people that are living there for sure as well. Uh, that's become a proxy war, though, uh, For and, and uh, all of the Russian separatists have been getting backed by the Russian government. It was it was just complete fucking bullshit. I mean, it, it, the, the, the idea that, like, additional sell shelling occurred in the past fucking month or so, and that's precisely why today is the day you had to recognize it and not fucking four years years ago not five years ago not eight years ago but now eight years in the uh, in eight years into this conflict every after doing military trainings every fucking year year after year in that same exact fucking area this idea that he would basically uh you know have to defend the sanctity of this region and the safety of these uh citizens or whatever by lying and saying there's an act of genocide going on or anything like that complete bullshit this is an act of irredentism. It's uh, further beyond that. It's taking over territory, Ukrainian territory, bombing Ukrainian territory. The last data that I got on the subject is that 40 military personnel had died. Okay, 40 military personnel had died. And I believe 10 civilians have died as a consequence of the targeted strikes that occurred on uh, Kiev and in Western Ukraine and in numerous parts of the country. And uh, this morning, Joseph Robinette Biden woke up and decided to fucking, uh, you know, reveal what kind of action that they were going to take against uh, against Ukraine or not against Ukraine. What am I saying? Against Russia. We'll see what the fuck happens. Uh, but right now, the situation is is uh, complete fucking in, uh, insanity. So now that Ukraine is being invaded, everybody raised their hand saying there's nothing we can do. Yeah, no shit. And for a lot of you, let me re-clarify my position because there's a lot of new people in here and there's a lot of people who don't understand what the fuck is going on. There's a lot of people who are probably in here like fucking confused. So let me explain something to you. Retaliation against the world's largest nuclear power was never a fucking option. That's precisely why people consider this to be World War III if World War III actually fucking breaks out. And what have I always said? World War III is not a real thing. We will always have co uh, proxy wars. Real nations, two warring nations are not going to fucking go to war because <laughs> because they have nukes. That was the whole point. That was also kind of the fucking heart of the conflict and heart of the reason why uh, Germany, France, other than their trade relationships, including America, other than their trade relationships, did not want Ukraine to join NATO either. They dangled it in front of Ukraine or said that they were going to continue the open door policy without actually ever fucking addressing that, like, that open door policy is not really an open door policy because of what just happened yesterday. Now, the entire reason still or the overwhelming majority of the problem and the reason is caused by Russia, okay? I want to fucking point this out because a lot of people think like I'm a fucking fan of Putin or something despite the massive banner that I've had on my fucking stream for the past month or so or for the past week or so, sorry, uh, and uh, numerous times that I've clarified my position. Russia is responsible. Russia is the one who fucking invaded Let's Ukraine. Go. Russia is responsible. Russia is not just saber rattling. They're not just posturing. They absolutely targeted strategic military positions, but they absolutely fucking bombed Ukraine. It's over. It's done. It's, it's Russia's fault, okay? And not only that, but it also was done in a way that 
confused analysts in fucking Moscow, confused Ukrainian leadership, confused analysts in Ukraine that weren't immediately fucking, uh, you know, repeating whatever they were hearing from the American government because it made no material sense. It made no sense beyond uh, Vladimir Putin just saying, I have like an interest in Ukraine. You could say you have an interest in Ukraine, but when your public is not interested in you invading Ukraine, as it is a deeply unpopular idea, and the counterinsurgency that you have to launch would be absolutely devastating for your economy, and the sanctions that are coming would be devastating for your fucking economy, it's just yeah, not worth it, year. right? So South this America. is, and I hate Come to fucking back, say yeah. this, this is a, a situation where it's madman bullshit. Okay, it's actually behaving in a fucking in in the most maddening, unacceptable, uh, brutal, violent. But more importantly than that, like uh, a way where uh, rational analysis is is almost impossible to fucking do. Completely, completely fucking uh, uh, ridiculous to to do this. Like this this act of war is like all war has consequences. They there are there are competing interests in a government, right? You're not supposed to say, oh, this person's fucking crazy, and that's why they're behaving in a crazy way because they're bad or this person is good and that's why they're behaving in a way so because they're good right governments don't operate that way countries don't operate that way they operate on uh, on behalf of their personal interests their material interests uh the military industrial complex makes money everybody ends up making money when the war uh when the war machine starts uh, kicking right there's also economic geopolit and uh, geopolitical interests and vladimir putin has baffled their own, his own fucking analysts, his own people, his own side. Everyone but Vladimir Putin is uh, shocked in this situation, at least on the other side, for the reasons that I've uh, laid out thus far, which is that it fucking does not make any sense whatsoever. War uh, would be uh, too horrible for the Russian economy. Uh, having an Afghanistan in their fucking backyard would be awful for the Russian economy. And uh, and the benefits, the material benefits that you gain from like invading Ukraine is, is not even marginal. When you could have postured and then forcibly uh, uh, brought America and other regions to the table for a neutralization agreement. If your goal for Vladimir Putin, if you're Vladimir Putin and your goal is to delegitimize NATO and routinely reference how fucking NATO is awful and expansionist and imperialist and a threat to your safety, doing this is the worst thing you can do because you absolutely, one, legitimize NATO for everyone and not only for everyone in like the the baltic region or not only for like fucking you know all the other countries that were like we told you so latvia estonia everyone else that's like oh yeah we've been fucking saying this for a very long time poland but you also literally get countries that you have successfully neutralized historically to say wait a minute we don't want to fucking be a part of russia this is bullshit like finland OK, that's the real fucking issue. If your goal is to, to come to table, come to the table and like purge NATO influence in the region and make sure that Ukraine has sovereignty and make sure that Ukraine is like still dependent on you as a dependent on Russian uh, on the Russian economy. Doing this is the exact opposite. Just like if your goal ultimately as Vladimir Putin is to denazify Ukraine, which is what he stated. OK, then why the fuck would you bomb Ukraine? Why would you bomb Western Ukraine? The only thing that happens in a situation like that historically is that you now have given legitimacy to the Nazis. Now the, the fucking 500 Azov Battalion is going to grow to a thousand, if not tens of thousands. So good luck and good job. Because all you've done in this situation, when you bomb fucking uh, you know, military positions that are couched within uh, civilian pockets, is legitimize a country's uh, genuine fears against you. So... Good luck to that. It makes zero fucking sense whatsoever. Obviously, the lesson I should learn from all of this is what? Like, that I should uh, take the American government's intelligence every single time, despite their fucking track record? No, of course not. I'm still going to fucking maintain my skepticism. I'm still going to maintain my, my, my critical analysis. Is, my, uh, is, is the goal, is, is what I should learn from this, the lesson I should learn from this, the fact that, like, I should assume that foreign leaders are just madmen and they're behaving in, like, a fucking crazy way? No, of course not. The only lesson I should learn from this, the only humbling moment in this circumstance, because I've apologized a million times over at this point. Jesus Christ, I've publicly came out and said, I was wrong, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I'm sorry, my predictions were fucking wrong, uh, even though people are still maintaining the fucking cope and seethe bullshit, right? Because it shows that you're not really interested in anything except for dubs and L's on the internet because you're a fucking weirdo debate lord. The only thing I, uh, I should dial back on is the certainty in which I deliver information, okay? That's it.
I really do hope that uh, one, first and foremost, people uh, in Ukraine are safe. That's number one. Um, I hope that uh, the Russian people do not suffer. Where is this information out of Russia about genocide coming from? It's all completely fabricated. It's bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. They're lying. And I said they were lying when they first said it too. It's of course it's bullshit. It's a fucking, it's an active war between separatist forces and Ukrainian National Guard. They've been shelling each other for eight years. 13,000 people have died. More Russians have died. But it's like a fucking 55 to 45% weight distribution of casualties, okay? So like this idea that it's an act of fucking genocide is ridiculous. And even if there was a fucking genocide and that was Vladimir Putin's like reason for why he had to invade and defend the people's republics there, okay? That he recognized the independence of. If that was the fucking case, why didn't he do that four years ago? Why didn't he do that five years ago? So what Vladimir Putin did once again is it completely fucking unacceptable, completely unacceptable. Uh, I just want to fucking point that out again and again and again over and over again because there's some dummies in here who probably don't understand it. What did it, what else? did I say? Uh, yeah. Oh, here's what I basically here. Here's my uh, repetition of what I said already. Didn't think a regional power would act so irrationally. I know Putin doesn't care about lives, but these actions are also these actions will directly harm his geopolitical interests, his energy projects, his geopolitical interests being, uh, you know, vilification of NATO, right? And making sure that NATO doesn't expand further. If that's your goal, you did the actual worst thing you possibly could. That's one. If your other goal there is, uh, you know, defending your energy projects, you had uh, Nord Stream 2, which was going really well. You know what I mean? It was like something that America didn't want, but like Germany definitely relied on. Okay, you were expanding your influence on the European uh, Union by by making them energy dependent to you. Okay, like that's a complex trade relationship that you have. Uh, that's a dub. That's a major dub for Putin, major dub for Russia. So much of a dub that America was like, dude, no, you can't do that. Not only that, but also this legitimizes uh, intelligence like military intelligence, uh, State Department apparatus, the pipeline between the State Department and mainstream media on the American side, on the European side and, and totally fucking uh, continues if not emboldens all the fucking anti-russian uh rhetoric so you know it's ggs on that this is like cold war 2.0 which is horrible okay horrible overall there's anti-war protests that are fucking starting in saint petersburg and by the way this is part of the reason why i said it was fucking bananas for him to invade okay because of this because like it's literally unpopular vladimir putin is his popularity has waned over the years, okay? But not only that, but they have polls, you know what I mean? They fucking polled Russian people and they were like, no, we don't want you to invade Ukraine. That's insanity. So this is like, like he can't do that. This is, this is the reason why I'm saying this is not like Crimea. When Crimea was annexed, first of all, no bloodshed. When Crimea was annexed, no bloodshed whatsoever. Referendum is bad, whatever. But like polling shows uh, consistently year over year that like people are happy being a part of Russia. People were celebrating in fucking Russia. He got a major dub on Crimea, okay? He did. He got a major dub on Crimea. Anyone who says, I'm not ascribing whether it's good or bad, okay? My personal position on Crimea does not matter in this circumstance. But Crimea was a major foreign policy dub for Vladimir Putin. He was emboldened. Nationalistic rhetoric uh, rose through the ranks. And people actually enjoy. People liked that decision. Ukraine is not like Crimea. Even Donbass is not like fucking Crimea. Every single fucking action that he takes beyond that makes it so much so much uh, 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 more difficult for him, okay? Yes, this invasion legitimizes the worst people alive. Like, absolutely the fucking worst. It legitimizes the worst fucking interests. It legitimizes the worst attitudes. It's horrible for fucking the Ukrainian people, obviously, that their lives are now in fucking limbo. Hopefully, there will be a little bit of fucking emancipation from all of this once the conclusion comes, and hopefully that conclusion is not, like, an awful and violent one or a continued fucking occupation by Russia. And instead is uh, a reasonable agreement uh, that offers some stability to Ukraine, a country that's already been like destroyed uh, for the past many, many fucking years, okay? Uh, another problem in this circumstance, of course, is like the, the consequences for the Russian people that will be hurt by the sanctions. It's not their fucking fault. They don't want this shit, but it doesn't matter. But another, could they arrest Putin? No, of course not. And there is no fucking potential regime change either. Uh, Vladimir Putin is too too powerful and uh, has like too tight knit of a, of a state apparatus to be able 
able to be overthrown. Maybe, maybe, but you know, it's it's incredibly, incredibly unlikely for it to happen. So for those of you, let me just point something out here, okay? For those of you who are thinking, why can't we just like go and help Ukraine? What the fuck? Why can't we just send military to Ukraine right now to defend them? Because I know that a lot of people have that take, right? A lot of people, uh, understandably, reasonably, their first fucking attitude immediately is like, we're the world police, we're America. We have an incredibly big dick, uh, long dick military. Why aren't we fucking sending uh, troops there? Well, the reason is because Russia has nukes. So if there was a fucking world war between America and Russia, then it's a nuclear war. And that's precisely why, because of Article 5, you could not have fucking NATO accept Ukraine into NATO. That's why Germany would never allow Ukraine to be in NATO. That's why America would never actually allow Ukraine to be in NATO. And that's why they fucking lied and dangled it in front of Ukraine, who was understandably and rightfully concerned by Russians encroaching on their fucking territory and now all they're gonna get is fucking guns okay all they're gonna get is guns that's it you're gonna get some guns and it's ggs okay after that it's like go ahead grandma uh trained by uh some fucking cia trained azov battalion guys go ahead shoot at some fucking russian paratroopers like it's horrible this was the worst possible fucking outcome of all and the unfortunate problem here the 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 to make matters worse is that like there's no there's no reasonable way to deal with Russia. If Russia wants to fucking if Russia says fuck diplomacy or rather you're not giving me anything I want. You're not even fucking giving me any concessions and I'm a world power. I'm not like fucking Afghanistan. They're going to fucking behave in this erratic way. They're going to behave in this violent way and they are. And that's something that we as like uh I guess we in in, in America have to understand and expect from our government as well, which is that like we are no longer the the imperial force that could just like Russia is no longer than the post-Soviet carcass that it once was that we sacked that we put some of the worst disgusting freaks in positions of power as we sacked that entire fucking country okay in the aftermath of the end of the cold war when America took the dub and capitalism won it, it's it's not it's not that fucking carcass that it once was it has a profound amount of economic power from all of the energy considerations it has okay so we're playing a we're we're you know we're playing a different fucking game and we're treating Russia isn't USSR either right now of course not but it doesn't matter we think like every other country that we are involved with even if there are sovereign regional power especially if they have fucking nukes every country that we involved with, uh, with that we involve ourselves with is not like Afghanistan you can't just like fucking roll over it's not Libya okay you can't do that so we can't actually help no but that was the case that was literally the case you could not help last week and you could not help a month prior and that's why I was saying this is fucking bullshit that's part of the reason why Saudi Arabia can do whatever the fuck it wants even though Saudi Arabia doesn't have the exact level of power that Russia has even we are energy dependent why because no one wants to pay a hundred dollars for fucking gas that's why it's like frustrating when people are like appeasement 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 well what's up what are we doing now we're doing appeasement now aren't we sure seems like we're doing appeasement appeasement was always the fucking point there's no there's no way to fucking deal with russia like you're not gonna fucking go and and actually engage in like active war okay with russia because they have nukes so this was fucked for ukraine the whole time yes yes the only way out of it is to exhaust diplomatic options at least before this happens okay that's it kind of like how when america wants to fucking roll over territory no one else can do anything about it you can't do shit you literally can't do anything if america wanted to invade ukraine tomorrow what the fuck are you gonna do you know what i'm saying what are you gonna do are you gonna say no no you can't not saying that they would obviously but you can't do anything to a fucking territorial regional fucking power that has a gigantic nuclear arsenal okay that's why you have to treat them as they are individual actors and go to the table and and make concessions that's what i've been saying since fucking day one can you give some examples of concessions they can make yes minx minsk two okay minsk uh three that's it that was what i've been saying from day one it's a neutralization agreement that would identify dpr and lpr as autonomous regions that are still a part of ukraine that would allow them to have at least like uh you know to maintain their culture cultural heritage like their russian language and shit like that while simultaneously and um, you know I, I would assume they would also make sure that like crimea's water crisis was uh no longer a crisis because one thing that ukraine did do was uh, dam up the uh the the river going into crimea after crimea uh was annexed by russia and uh, at first the water reserves were enough for russia to deal with but uh it was becoming a water crisis i think someone wrote about it like a year ago uh that probably would be another part of that uh another part of that neutralization agreement and ultimately this idea that uh you know no one would violate a, a deal that would make both sides happy that no one would fucking violate 
but Ukraine didn't like the Minsk agreement and Russia was uh, not really involved in it regardless. So, you know, it, 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 it did not happen in the way that it was supposed to. You don't think that's completely off the table? No shot. Russia will give Donbass territory back even if they retreat from the rest of Ukraine. I mean, right now, I don't know what's on the table. I don't think anything is on the table. Right now, I think like it's it's attrition. I think right now it's about how much the Russian economy can handle and how much Vladimir Putin can handle potentially. Massive news. Russia has crossed the Dnieper, Dnieper River in the south with tanks under fire from the Ukrainian side. So... This is another thing that is like very confusing to me because like I just don't fucking understand, right? I don't understand what the fuck they're doing. Like I I don't like what is the goal? What is the purpose? What are the fuck what the fuck? What are you doing? Vladimir Putin, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Stop it. Okay, I'm trying again. Okay, I'm like the UN Security Council. You stop it right now. Sick and tired of it. I mean, from what I understand, the Ukrainian uh, internal ministry has already uh, talked about like arming everyone that needs guns uh, inside of Ukraine, like the civilian population. And I don't know if like they're like, we have guns, we're going to give it to anyone who wants it, which is, of course, not great. You know what I mean? Like that's some that's some fucking Chechen shit, right? We all know how that went. It's just never good to have uh to, to put your fucking civilian population in harm's way like that but also there is nothing else that you can do in a situation like this where you have to launch an insurgency against a much much larger uh superpower you know what i mean like yes turn to america good guy with a gun beats bad guy with gun yeah that's not first of all america is never the good guy with a gun okay no turning to america in that situation would be, be use the bad guy with a gun to beat the other bad guy that's immediately attacking you with a gun but even in that situation it doesn't matter because you can't fucking do that because th both of the guys have nuclear guns okay today i'm authorizing additional strong sanctions and new limitations on what can be exported to russia this is going to impose severe cost on the Russian economy. The moment that Vladimir Putin fucking brought troops inside of Ukrainian borders, Brandon was right, straight up. The moment that Vladimir Putin went from like doing his fucking military exercise at the border and, and doing the same shit that he's done year over year over year, the moment that he actually was like, yeah, we're fucking recognizing the independence of LDR uh, or LPR and DPR in the Donbass region. And then we're fucking doing a peacekeeping mission there it's over it's a wrap it's ggs okay straight up he is right russia in that circumstance is absolutely the aggressor absolutely the fucking violent force absolutely a fault one thousand percent both immediately and over time we have purposefully designed these sanctions to maximize the long-term impact on russia and to minimize the impact on the united states and our allies and i want to be clear the united states is not doing this alone for months, we've been building a coalition of partners representing well more than half the global economy. 27 members of the European Union, including France, Germany, Italy, as well as the United Kingdom, Canada, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and many others, to amplify the joint impact of our response. Shut the fuck up. I just spoke with the G7. No, oh wow. Switzerland resists imposing own sanctions against Russia. Switzerland condemns the Russian invasion of Ukraine in the strongest terms. We urge Russia to immediately cause military aggression, immediately cease military aggression, and withdraw its troops from the Ukrainian territory. This is a gross violation of international law. International humanitarian law all must be respected. We are very concerned about the danger to civilians. I mean, they have a, they have a good track record on that. <laughs> oh no. I mean, it doesn't, to be fair, like uh, to be fair it, it doesn't even fucking you know it, it, the entire world coming down upon russia and and implementing sanctions is i don't know how how successful that will be in deterring russian aggression further aggression i think at this point it's like is it international law a joke though it it is of course bro i don't give a fuck about international law i wipe my ass with international law well just kidding that's not me that's america that does that regularly okay like obviously international law is bullshit i don't give a fuck about international law what what actually sucks in this situation what i do give a fuck about is like people dying okay wars happening people dying see uh, the endless and unnecessary fucking violence that uh, people are subjected to for no fucking reason other than i don't know uh living in a uh, living in an area it's so stupid and also you're a child if you think that international law is a legitimate fucking thing okay because every single thing that russia has done so far in ukraine israel has done as well and international law is dog shit in that circumstance saudi arabia is currently doing that and 
America recently on top of on top of Saudi Arabia fighting fucking uh, the uh, Houthis in, in Yemen. America, instead of fucking applying any sanctions to Saudi Arabia, which is currently doing a genocide and a famine, a man-made artificial famine in Yemen, they literally fucking sanctioned the, the people, the Houthis, which are not good. Certainly, but they are still the government. It's like Hamas in in Gaza. They fucking added uh, additional sanctions to the Houthis in Yemen. We sanctioned Yemen this week. Okay, so you know, miss me with this fucking international law bullshit. Okay, we've cut off Russia's largest bank, a bank that holds more than one third of Russia's banking assets by itself. Cut it off from the U.S. financial system, and today we're also blocking four more major banks. That means every asset they have in America will be frozen. This includes VTB, the second largest bank in Russia, which has- How does that work? Like when, when fucking, like is Chelsea Football Club now owned by the fucking people? Like how does that work? Is Chelsea Football Club now a part of uh, giving back to the people of Chelsea? Like how, how does that fucking work when you freeze their assets and shit? What's happening to footy bruv? What's going on with footy? This is not even a fucking joke, by the way. This is like actually a, a serious question. When you when you seize the assets of Russian billionaire oligarchs, which control the the vast majority of the Russian, I mean, not the vast majority, but like the majority of the Russian wealth, what do you do in that situation? Like what? How do you do that? They have so many fucking assets in United States of America and also in the UK and in Europe. What are you gonna do about that? Also. The main thing that they're not fucking sanctioning is what, 30% of the Russian economy? Energy. Because of our reliance on Russian energy, both in Europe and in America as well, they not only fucking, even in the first round of sanctions, they bought 700, what is it, 700 million dollars or like a, uh, here you go, oil, gas, and uh, commodities aren't being weaponized for now. This is from two days ago. Okay, this is from two days ago. But this is after the sanctions. In 24 hours after Vladimir Putin signed a decree recognizing two breakaway territories in the European Union, the UK and the US bought a combined 3.5 million barrels of Russian oil and refined products worth more than 350 million at current prices. On top of that, the West probably bought another 250 million worth of Russian natural gas, plus tens of millions of dollars of aluminum, coal, nickel, titanium, gold, and other commodities. In total, the bill likely tops 700 million. How does that make you feel when you fucking come in here and you say like, Hassan, you're so stupid for fucking constantly talking about like nato this nato that america actually wants the safety and uh, security of ukrainian people H how does that make you feel does that make you feel good when you find out that like they don't give a fuck a single fuck about ukrainians and never have and never will and literally fucking gave money to the country they're supposed to be fucking sanctioning does that make you feel good saving the banger sanctions for later possibly if we sanction all we have no more leverage Dog, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to sanction when they fucking do a nuclear first strike? What the fuck are you talking about? They already invaded Ukraine. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this when, when the nukes start flying, we got the inner, we got the ICBMs. Okay. Nuclear warheads are like boop, 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 being built. Uh, and, and fucking the top of the, the nuclear fucking warhead is like opening up and I'm like, Hey, uh, the fucking sanctions are coming dude. What are you going to do? Oh, we had to save the banger ones. No, dude, this is not saving the banger ones. This is literally stacking the fucking deck against sanctions that you're going to do because you you don't want to buy these commodities at a way higher price point later. This is why these countries that have like complex trade relationships can't fucking do this sort of uh they can't they can't engage in this sort of action. Yeah, I'm going to fucking <laughs> I'm going to sanction my neighbor by giving them more money. And then I'm going to be like, here, you take this money because, you know, the prices are going to be really high when I sanction you. Dude, they're trying to avoid sanctions that hurt the West as well. Hello. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're right, actually. It's it's to make sure that the West is not hurt. You know who is hurt, though? Ukraine. OK, they just get fucked in the process. While America's like, oh man, we're gonna sanction you guys, okay? And it's gonna be bad, and it's gonna be scary. But also, at the same time, we do want to buy the commodities, please. Anyway, <clears throat> and that's the way it's gonna be, at least for now. The U.S. and its European allies will continue buying Russian natural resources, and Moscow will continue shipping them, despite the biggest political crisis between the former Cold War uh, warriors since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Both sides are aware of the contradictions. The West knows that commodities are a cash cow for Putin, fueling his imperial ambitions, thanks in great part to ultra-high oil and gas prices. But the allies are also aware of the economic self-harm of cutting imports to zero. Doesn't that make you feel weird? Uh, like a little bit you, you think that this is like black and white 
you think there's good and bad, right? You're like, everyone is telling you a story. You go to the news and the newscaster tells you a story. Vladimir Putin's a madman. He's a bad man. He's a madman. He's crazy. He's fucking going, going crazy. And America is the good force for good okay they're gonna do good things and the and those good things revolve around sanctions right they're we're gonna sanction them we're gonna fucking stop them and like you know we really care about the ukrainian people we really care about the ukrainian people and then like 40 percent of the fucking news coverage while bombs are fucking flying revolves around like what's this gonna do to the gas prices okay oh shit okay i guess we don't care about the ukrainian people as much if it fucking impacts our wallet okay if it hurts our wallet uh germany's energy dependency on russia is 35 percent oil for gas 55 percent coal 50 percent yeah, exactly this this is why Germany would have been a perfect fucking, this is why Germany would have been a perfect fucking uh, person to to uh, sit at the negotiating table. And this is why they were uh, taking a way less aggressive stance. This is why they only sent fucking 5,000 helmets. This is why they stopped Estonia from sending German-made weapons into Ukraine. Those were the reasons. There was only one fucking guy, a couple countries that are supposedly, well, the main reason, the main people that did not want any sort of fucking conversation to take place and refused to have uh any sort of conversation take place that would uh you know treat the russian expansionist attitude uh seriously and you know meet them halfway make concessions get ukraine to make concessions uh the only country that would not do that was america and canada and the uk but obviously mostly led by america i mean dude come on this is just a contradiction oh man what an insane contradiction that we're putting sanctions, but not on things that would actually make our leadership in the West look bad. That would make life worse for Americans and German people and make it more expensive. And it would make it more expensive, right? Uh, for its part, the Kremlin may be tempted to weaponize its natural resources, which would trigger blackouts in Europe, but it also knows commodity exports are its own economic lifeline. It's the commodities market version of the Cold War doctrine of mutually assured destruction. With other adversaries, say Iran or Venezuela, the White House has been quicker to use oil as a geopolitical tool. As a result, both Tehran and Caracas cannot sell oil legally in the world markets, not just into the U.S. However, Russia remains free to ship its oil into America, and the U.K. continues to buy Russian diesel, too. By the way, that's why I said you can't do fucking sanctions on a country like Russia. You could do it on Iran, you could do it on Venezuela, but it's too late. GG's for Russia. You can't do it for Russia. You can fucking, you can bully other countries like Iran, and you can bully other countries like Venezuela, and destroy them, cripple them economically. Make sure that no one fucking deals with them, and ruin their people, kill their people, literally, because sanctions are an act of war. Sanctions are a, an act of collective punishment that international law says is appropriate and available. Uh, to use in your fucking tool belt as a Western superpower. Sanctions are the reason why there were 500,000 dead Iraqi children, which Madeleine Albright famously said was just the cost of war that they were willing to take. But you can't do that for Russia. You can't do that. You can do that for Cuba. You can't do that for Russia. And that's precisely why you have to meet them halfway at the table and take them seriously. I understand that it sounds like I'm fucking uh, defending Vladimir Putin or anything. No, he's a madman. He's a mad lad. He's crazy. He's bad. All of that stuff. Okay. He's violent. The actions he took are completely morally abhorrent, completely unacceptable, but you have to take him seriously because he has nukes. And not only that, but also because he has commodities and goods and oil and gas that the American government is refusing to fucking give up on because ultimately you're not going to fucking, you're not going to actually, you know that you're not going to actually defend uh, Ukraine. You're not going to help Ukraine. You're just going to give them guns and you're going to give them weapons. And then Ukraine has to fucking deal with like endless war against an occupying force and turn Ukraine into fucking Afghanistan. That's devastating. That's bad for Russia. As I've said time and time again, from the fucking jump, from the start, who is stands to benefit from this circumstance not the ukrainian people who stands to benefit from this circumstance not russia the only people that stand to benefit in this situation are the people that are selling guns giving uh, giving money as a loan a conditional loans to ukraine giving offering training and guns to ukraine that are far away that won't even fucking uh, accept ukrainian refugees millions of people will be displaced if this matter is not resolved immediately